Sometimes people get into a relationship because a member of the party thinks that their partner is perfect. It's only after they are together does the truth come out that possibly they may have made a mistake, and sometimes those mistakes can be fatal. My name is Jeff, aka Geekers. Welcome to another installment of Black Sight Files from Unsolved Mysteries. In this installment, we'll be hearing about the case of Ann Sigmund and Gary Goff. This case first aired on the November 30th, 1988 episode of Unsolved Mysteries. Like many cases from Unsolved Mysteries, the case of Ann Sigmund and Gary Goff is a road that has taken many twists and turns. On one hand, you have the camp of uh, Charlie Sigmund, who was shot and killed, who are claiming that this was all premeditated. However, if you listen to the other camp, that consists of Ann Sigmund and Gary Goff, you will hear the claim that Charlie Sigmund was in a drunken rampage the evening he was shot and killed. This was stated by Gary Goff. As of recording this installment, Ann Sigmund has never been located after going on the run. Ultimately, the truth lies somewhere in the twisted jumble of claims and evidence. Was Charlie murdered? because he found some secrets out about his wife, including the fact that she was a practicing witch and a follower of Satan? Or did Charlie become enraged about his family falling apart, only to be shot and killed because he was under the influence of alcohol? We will find out about this case after these upcoming commercials. Some mornings, there's a little monster in all of us. Morning, Fred. And until that first cup of coffee, we can all be pretty beastly. Good morning, Fred. That's when your 7-Eleven store can be a lifesaver. Good morning, Fred. With a good cup of fresh brewed hot coffee to perk up your morning. 7-Eleven coffee brings out the best, not the beast in you. Hey, Ralph! Up next, we are about to go into the case viewing. If you are new to this series, uh, basically this is where we go to the Unsolved Mysteries wiki and we look at the uh, case of Ann Sigmund and Gary Goff, where I will have uh, my secretary. Her name is Jasmine. She will be reading to us the uh, case via the read aloud function on my uh, browser. A word of advice, everybody, this program fucking sucks. <laughs> uh, because of that, it does not uh, operate properly sometimes. And because of that, I may have to kind of stop and then re-attempt for the uh, program to to read what it is that, you know, what we wanted to read. So let's actually get to that right now, shall we? So let's do this. We're going to do this. So I will begin by reading the beginning part. Uh, this case is Ann Sigmund and Gary Goff. Uh, if you couldn't tell the lady here, this is Ann Sigmund, and this guy right here is Gary Goff. You know. Anyway, their uh, real names are Ann Denise Mitchum uh, Sigmund and Gary Edwards Goff. Alias is Andy Hay Hayes, Andy Partlow, Annie D. Goff for... And Sigmund and Wiley for Gary. Why does she get f three aliases, but Gary only gets one? <laughs> anyway, they're wanted for murder. The uh, they've been missing since April 1987. Okay, so let's actually zoom in, and I am hoping that this is actually going to work. The way it should. It's actually been a couple weeks since I've last been able to do one of these uh, uh, videos because I've been under the weather. So I'm hoping that you know it works, you know, pretty good. So let's do a small paragraph. Let, let's go down to here and do this. There we go. Announce. Oh, come on, get that shit off. Come on, hold on. Well, hold on. Let's. Ah, crap. Now this is all. How the fuck do you take? I I, I turned this off like, and I had it set forever. Why the fuck is it on again? I don't want it on there. Okay, let's try it again. Okay, 
Okay, right click, read aloud. Let's hope that this works, ladies and gentlemen. Come on, please. 39 year old Charles, Charlie Sigmund, Ooh, lived in Blytheville, Arkansas, ah. and worked for the Southwestern Bell Telephone Company as a telephone lineman. He was a kind and friendly man with strong religious beliefs and a strong work ethic. However, he was also a man unlucky in love. Married and divorced twice, he despaired of finding the right woman until he met Anne Mitchum. This time, he thought he had finally found happiness. He was wrong. Sometimes marriage is overrated, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, you know, I, I've never been married. I've been engaged, but I've never been married. Uh, but yeah, sometimes marriage is just overrated, you know? It, it's better to be by yourself sometimes, I guess. Especially if you've been married and divorced twice already. It's just like, may maybe marriage just isn't for you. And that's nothing bad. It's just that sometimes things don't work out for us the, the way that we hope, you know. Uh, okay, so let's see. He, he was wrong. Let's go down to here. Now we're getting loud. During the early morning of October 19, 1986, he was shot seven times. He was found lying face down on the living room carpet with quite a bit of blood under him. His clothes were in disarray as if he had been in a fight. He was soaking wet with sweat and was bloody. Well, yeah, I mean, like, the guy, the poor guy was shot seven times. You don't shoot seven, a person seven times and expect there to not be any sort of residual damage, you know? Like, you turn the guy, you know, I'm not trying to make a joke out of this, but you turn the guy into literal Swiss cheese. The guy, the guy is not going to be able to keep a lot of his internals internal at this point, ladies and gentlemen. But anyway, seven shots. To me, that rings out as overkill. If you're fine, if you're shooting somebody to basically kind of uh to basically stop an attack, you're gonna want to do shoot them at least like I'd say at least once or twice, just enough for them to feel the pain and to stop whatever it is that you know their attack. But the fact that they shot him seven times now, keep in mind it's gonna be mentioned. I think it's mentioned a little bit later. They shot him with two different guns, so it's bam, 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 bam. Oops, guns empty. Here's another gun. Bam, 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 bam. You know, like. To me, that screams more than just self-defense. It, it, it screams premeditated, to be honest. You shoot the guy once or twice in the kneecap. He'll go down. He's not going to get back up right away. He's not fucking Jason Voorhees, ladies and gentlemen. He will, he'll stay down if you shoot him in the kneecap. But no, they shot, they shot this guy not once, not twice, not three times. They shot him seven times. They shot him seven times. That's all there is to really say about this, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. There we go. And was separated from Charlie. He was killed in the home of her new boyfriend, 43-year-old Gary Goff. She admitted at the time that he had been shot by Gary. But the events of that bloody night still bewilder his friends and family. Even the police are divided about the circumstances of his death. Was it self-defense or was it murder? The only two people who know the answers have disappeared. Okay, now, as of recording this installment of Black Sight Files from Unsolved Mysteries, uh, it was quite a while ago, but Gary Goff actually turned himself in. Uh, it's and, and currently as of... Like I said, recording this, Anne Sigmund has never been located. There are some... Uh, there are some uh, some theories that possibly Gary may have killed Anne, but we don't know that. All we know is what we're going to find out here. Also, by the way, let's see here. What did I, what, uh, oh yeah, I disappeared. Let me just, let me mark this so I don't forget where to go down to. Okay, let's go there. A uh, little known fact, it's going to be mentioned later on in this. Gary Goff was actually uh, a friend of, uh, Charlie Sigmund. We're going to find that out pretty soon. But yeah, th this lady really wanted to fuck Charlie over. You know, she, 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 you know, she, she most likely had him killed. Not only did she have him killed, she had one of his friends kill him. This, this woman's kind of cold blooded, if you ask me. Okay.
Charlie loved children, and when he fell in love with Anne, he also did so with her two children from a previous marriage. He wanted the best for his new family, and shortly after their marriage, he sold his small house and moved Anne and her children to a nine-acre truck farm. He named the farm after his and Anne's initials, C and A's, a name that he felt symbolized their happy marriage. According to his mother, Bonita, he and Anne work side by side on the farm. Bonita said that Anne's children is what drew her and Charlie together. Uh, drew them together. The, this program, it never finishes the last word 99% of the time. Uh, so basically, you had a guy who, it sounds like he, uh, basically, I'm guessing he did not have any children from his first two marriages. And because, you know, he, he liked these kids, you know, it's kind of like a, uh, an easy way for Anne to get married to this guy. It, nowadays, you can't help but go on to like, a, a, oh God, what are those, they're called, they're like dating apps. And sometimes you'll come across a woman that basically wants a guy there to take care of her and her kids. It isn't so much they want a relationship, they just want a sugar daddy, in other words. And and going back all the way back to this time, you had a guy who literally loved these kids, and it's basically, you know, it's kind of like what ladies today want. They want a guy there, basically, to help take care of the kids, yeah. Okay. Come on, please. They were crazy about him, and he felt the same way about them. Looking back on it, Bonita now believes that Anne was feathering her nest, or trying to get money from Charlie so that she could live comfortable. Comfortably. In other words, in other words, she was wanting a sugar daddy, basically. There's nothing wrong with that, you know, like, if you don't, you know, like, if you don't plan on using the guy, like, killing him, there's nothing wrong with having a sugar daddy. Hell, I, you know, there's also guys who want a sugar mama. Is that the right term? Right term? Or is, is it cougars? I don't fucking know. But, you know, like, the, the, these type of people are on both sides of the fence. You have uh, ladies who want a sugar daddy, and you have guys who want a sugar mama or cougar, whatever the fucking correct term is. As long as you don't do anything illegal, who the fuck are we to say anything about it? But, the fact is that they killed this poor guy, so that, that makes it our problem there now, you know? Like, you see what I'm trying to say there? Like, like if, if she didn't do anything illegal, who are we to say anything? But the fact she did something illegal, now it becomes all of our problems. Charlie's friend, Joe Iglehart, said that he thought their relationship was strange. He did not believe that and was Charlie's type. However, it was clear to him that Charlie was crazy about her. During summer 1986, he began to suspect that she was seeing another man. He told Joe that he was suspicious of her and that he had been watching her. She apparently disappeared one night, but eventually came VA. Uh, came back. Now, that alone is not much to really, you know, be kind of paranoid about. Hell, maybe she went out for a walk, you know? There's been times, you know, now that, especially that, you know, with my mom gone, it's just me in this big apartment by myself. There's times I will get up and I just I can't sleep. So I'll go out and take a long walk in the darkness, you know, just to clear my mind. Who knows? That's what something she could have done. She could have done something like that. That, that alone, her going out is not a reason to just start having your radar go all over the place, you know? Okay. Wait, hold on. Uh, let's see here, read loud. Come on, please. This case first aired on the November 3rd. I knew it was going to happen for fuck's sake. It's... Okay, let's see here. Hold on, where is he? Okay, I'll read this next part. Uh, so, uh, let's see here. But eventually she came back. Okay, according to Joe, on another night, Charlie was... Uh, now, you got to keep in mind, this is according to... This is according to Joe. This is according to Joe. This is third-hand... Uh, third-hand 
like I don't well, not knowledge, but this is like hearsay basically. You know, it's coming from a third person. Hold on, I'm just seeing what this is. Let's see if there's something. Hold on, let's see. Okay. Uh this is third hand. I don't take third hand stuff. I, I want reports. I want like first hand accounts. Not what somebody I don't want what a friend of a friend of a friend who knew somebody who lived across the ocean. I knew somebody who lived uh, further, you know. No, I don't want that. I want first hand recorded knowledge, you know. Anyway, according to Joe, on another night Charlie woke up and Anne was gone. He thought she had taken off again. He got up and looked around the house, but could not find her. He then noticed a light coming from underneath the door to their shed in their backyard. So how the fuck did he, you know, was he outside or something? Did he look out a window? Like, how the fuck did he know about this light? Anyway, he went out, opened the door, and found her sitting on the floor in a negligee. She had a semicircle of candles around her and a poster of a, a poster or drawing of a Satan like figure on the wall. She was chanting words that uh, did, he did not understand. He confronted her and they uh, went back into the house. Now, to those of you who are curious, hold on, let's actually uh, do this. Hold on, I can this. And then this, that's what the image you see behind the title is. This is actually uh, a screen cap from the, uh, from the episode itself. This is, uh, Anne that was sitting when she was sitting on the floor in her negligee, basically. So there's that, but yeah, so, uh, Hey, you know, like I said, if, if she's not doing anything to you, you know, you know, let her be, let her be. <laughs> You 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 gotta you everybody has a fucking dark side. Hell I have a dark side. I have a dark side. I'm not gonna say what it is, but I have a dark side. Okay, I, okay, my my dark side is I I'm addicted. I I have an addiction. You may not know it because you know I like two different these are two different things. Like this is anyway, I have an addiction to transformers. I collect a shit ton of Transformers. I mean, it, it'd be to the point of like, holy shit, Jeff, that's way too much. Yes, I know it could be too much, but still, it's my thing. One of these days, I'm going to have to take, I'm going to have to bring, you know, my girlfriend or wife, on, well, it's going to be a girlfriend to start off with. Anyway, bring her, bring her here, and she's going to have to see all the Transformers. It's something, you know, they're going to have to get used to. But yeah, I like... <laughs> Why you know I can never understand why the whole uh with the whole hubbub about Satanists is it's okay to fucking worship God. It's okay to worship God, but oh my god, you you wanna you wanna you wanna put like fucking candles in a half circle, wear a a, a teddy or a negligee or whatever you want to call it. Oh, and and have a weird picture of some guy, you know, with horns. Oh, that's wrong. But we got we got to we got to worship a guy who looks like a 70s hippie. Oh, that's totally fine. That's totally fine, ladies and gentlemen. But the guy with the uh, with the horns, no, that's not cool. You know, to to me they're both fucking fake religions. I don't believe in religion, so, you know. But uh yeah, so basically he found out something about her, uh, about his, you know, about Anne, and he didn't like it. And now that I'm thinking about it right now as I'm talking about this, this could be where why she was gone that one evening. Instead of, like, she could have been doing her because they believe she was also a witch, that she was a practicing witch. Uh, it could be that she was actually off doing her witchy stuff, you know? Like, who knows? Maybe she was, like, at a cemetery or she was in the woods or something. She, she, she could have been doing something witchy. Maybe if the guy was, maybe if the guy was, you know, was all kind of interested, you know, I'm pretty sure she would have been a lot more cool about it, you know, like, hey, hey you know, don't knock it till you try it, I guess you could say. But, uh, yeah, you know, like, maybe he goes, ah, oh, so that's what you do every night. You know, in instead of being judgmental, you know, she'd probably been like, yes, this is what I do, this, you know, I've been doing this since I was young or whatever, you know. But I'm pretty sure because of the way that this went, I'm pretty sure he treated her like shit and stuff could have happened, you know. Okay. Now that now I feel dirty telling you guys about my Transformers addiction. I, I feel bad about that. I feel bad about that. 
Okay. Don't think of me any differently. I like Transformers, damn it. Okay, come on, please. Please. This case oh first god. aired on the note. Oh my god, really? Holy shit. Okay, let's. Really? You're not. Now, I know it's there because I fucking just. I just saw it. It said Charlie and Joe. Yeah, oh. It's... Oh, sorry. Charlie told Joe. Oh, I'm so fucking sorry. I'm so fucking sorry. Holy shit, Jim. My eyes are shot. My eyes are shot. Sue me. Sue me. Okay, anyway. Charlie told Joe and Bonita about the bizarre incident. He told Bonita that Anne does not worship God. Well, she... Is it? Is it like... Well, no. He's Satan's supposed to be a, uh, a like a former archangel or something like that. Okay, never mind. Sorry. My bad. My bad. Uh, three weeks earlier, he found a strange doll in the bedroom. Anne told him it was used in her witchcraft rituals. Like I said, you know, to to each their own. I'd be I'd be like, you know, if it was me, okay, if it was me. But let, let, let's say Jasmine over here. Let's say Jasmine over here. Let's say that Jasmine was a witch. I would have one simple question. I'd be like, hey, baby. That doll that you use, that, that thing doesn't represent me, right? No, it doesn't represent you, Jeff. This is just something that we use to focus our magical powers on. I'd be like, hey, cool, fine, fine. Hey, no problem. You you, you need this room here. I'll let you continue using this room. You know, like, I, I'm very open-minded like that. You know, like, and, you know, and also you get to see your, you know, awesome-looking wife. Wearing negligee. I mean, it's a win-win, basically, ladies and gentlemen. Who cares if she worships Saint? You know, like he's a negligee. You know. Anyway, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. Uh. uh okay. Rich, witchcraft rituals. A needle was uh through its heart. He told Bonita that one morning he woke up and found it on his pillow. He uh, was. Uh, he also reported finding satanic literature among her possessions. He was certain that she was involved in witchcraft and possibly devil worship. It, it's sounding kind of like it, dude. A, you know, like the, you don't need me there to really confirm this for you. You know. Uh, disturbed by Anne's behavior, Charlie demanded that she moved out. Boy, that escalated fucking quickly. <laughs> We we went past the whole trying to understand and try to work you know this out to just get the fuck out, get the fuck out. Now keep in mind this lady was married to the guy at the time. Uh, she went to nearby Brothersville, Missouri, to live with her coworker Gary Goff, a truck driver who had once been a policeman. Ironically, Gary Charlie and Gary ha had known each other since childhood, so they were friends. Uh, but most upsetting to Charlie was that Anne took her two children with her. Which I have to say, why wouldn't she? They're her kids. It isn't like they're his biological kids. Yeah, he may have, you know, he may have loved those kids, but they're not his kids by blood. What, did he actually think that he was going to be able to tell the Satan-worshipping witch to leave his house? And she'd be like, okay, okay, I'll leave. You can keep my two kids. You know, is that seriously what he was hoping would happen? No. Nah, the mom, you know, Anne most likely loved her kids. She's going to take her kids with her. It's a fucking package deal, dude. You don't get, you don't get to, you know, kick one part out and then keep everything else. You know, it doesn't work like that. Doesn't work like that. Now, am I saying that this is justification for him being murdered? No, no, nothing. You know, does nothing short of self-defense is justification for murder. But to to get upset that Anne took her kids, her kids, you know, with her when he kicked her out, you really can't get that upset, dude. You you she did what you want. It's just that she took everything you know of value to her. She took her kids. She loved her kids. You know, like. Okay, so I'm going to start right here. These events uh, took the toll on him. He became depressed. Well, maybe you should have thought about the, the consequences before you kicked the, the Satan worshipping witch out. You know, like, 
You know, and honestly, you know, if I, if I found out that Jasmine over here was a Satan worshiping witch, I'd ask her, hey, can you make me a little bit buff? Do you have magical powers to make me look buff or something? You know, but hey, that's just me. That's just me. Uh, yes, see here. He became depressed. He missed Anne and her two children. He missed Anne. Then he should have fucking kicked her out. He should have fucking kicked her out, dude. Like, like, maybe what he should have done was, you know, he should have been like, okay, okay, I, I gotta wrap my head around this. I'm seeing my wife, I'm seeing my wife on the floor uh, with a half circle of candles, and she's wearing some sexy lingerie. I have to wrap my head around this. I have to, I, I, I need to fucking visualize this and get, you know, figure this out. But it seems like he missed that, or he leapfrogged that step. He went from finding out straight to get the fuck out. <laughs> you know, it, it, it's like, it's like, dude, you got to think about, you got to think about what can happen with your actions. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Okay. So he still talked to her occasionally, and according to some friends, had then uh, had then received threatening phone calls from Gary. Uh, however, he did not report uh, the apparent threats to the police. And like I said, because of, this is like third, second-hand knowledge, third-hand knowledge, or whatever the correct term is, I'm not really going to worry about it. I want. I always prefer to see actual reports. Okay, let's try this. Can we... Let's see here. Let, let's do a small amount right here. Small amount. It's, it's about baby step, steps, ladies and gentlemen. Baby steps. Okay, come on. Come on. Baby steps. This case first aired on the no- Okay, seriously, the thing's just fucked up for some reason. Okay, so let's see here. Uh, on the night of- Let's see here. On the night of October 18th, 1986. Wow, I was not even five yet at this time. Holy shit. Uh, anyway, Charlie was uh, with an old friend at home when he, re he received a phone call from Anne. She told him that her children were crying and wanted to see him. She was also threatening to commit suicide. He told his friend that he had to go up to uh, Anne and Gary's house to see what was going on. He told his friend, I could be getting set up here. He reluctantly agreed to drive to Anne and Gary's house. According to his friend, he was quite sober. He thought of taking, oh, jeez, <clears throat> taking a pistol along, but reconsidered. That was a major mistake. If you are, if you think you're going to be going into a trap, you should go armed if needed. You know, I'm not saying go and just start shooting the place up. I'm not saying go and start shooting the place up, but if you go there and, and the wife, you know, the wife, the, the Satan worshiping witch is levitating and your former best friend his eyes are rolling in the back of his head you may want to have some f form of self-defense yeah that, that's just me that's just me if if i stupidly threw out my uh you know same worshiping witch wife and you know and she she said i'm gonna eat your soul and and you know like she's like jeff can you come up here please i'm having problems I would still go armed, you know. I'd be like, okay, I'll be up there. Uh, just so you guys know, I'm going to be coming with a gun. I'm going to be coming with a board with a nail in it. <laughs> I'm going to bring some holy water, even though I don't believe in religion. I'm going to be bringing some stuff. So if you guys plan on trying to jump me and you, you want to turn my uh, corpse into a robe or something for you to wear, I'm not going to. I'm, go I'm going to defend myself. Yeah. But yeah, that, but in all seriousness, if he thought he was going into a trap, he should have gone armed. Okay, hold on. Now, where was this at again? Wasn't this in Texas? When was this in Texas? Where was this at exactly? Uh, what does it say? Oh, Arkansas. Arkansas, okay. Okay. Because uh, I was going to say, well, if it's Texas, they walk around guns all the time. It's like fucking second nature to those guys. Why didn't he have his gun? Anyway, okay. At 3.20 a.m., 
uh, that same night, Anne arrived at the police station and reported that Charlie had been shot at her and Gary's house. The Crothersville Police Department conducted a crime scene investigation. According to Patrolman Gary Hilburn, the house was torn apart. It was clear to him that a very bad struggle had occurred. There was blood all over the doors and walls. Okay, so the way the way I can imagine it is because they shot him seven times. To explain the blood on the walls and the doors, maybe they got him into the house. He shut the door behind him. They then pulled out the gun and shot him, and the blood splatter would hit the walls and everything. Maybe he started stumbling through the house or trying to get out of the house, depending on like the entrance he came in. They shot him again, and that's how the, a lot of the walls were covered in his blood. It could have been an ambush or something. Uh, there were a couple of bullet holes hold on, uh, in the walls and one of the doors. There were seven, seven bullet wounds in Charlie's body. Two on the inside of his left thigh. One in his upper left... Ooh, ouch! His upper left... Ooh. Oh, okay, here's a little known fact for the ladies. Here's a little known fact for the ladies. Us guys, we have, here, let me mark, mark this so I know where I'm to continue from. Us guys, we have like a shared pain neural network. I, I shit you not. We have a shared pain neural network. Now, if you actually hit us like in the face or you punch us in the stomach, other guys are not going to feel it. Other guys are not going to feel it. However, if you kick a guy in the balls or you do some sort of damage to scrotum or something... All of us guys fucking feel it. That that's where the the whole old the old saying you if you do this I'm going to do this to you and your grandchildren are going to feel it. That's where this comes from. It's because of the scrotum pain neural network. You heard it. You hit us in the scrotum. It could be like a little flick and we're going to feel it. Like, like, you, you ever have a guy, you ever, do you have a guy in your life and, and everything's fine and then, and then all of a sudden they'll be like, and, and you'll be like, what's wrong? And he goes, oh, 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 nothing, nothing, nothing. That's the scrotum neural network at play, ladies and gentlemen. They don't want to tell you that it's because they, they just got, uh, you know, that pain in their ball sack because if ladies find out about this this shared pain network that we have, they're going to use that as as a, as a tactic against us. You you don't want to watch the Golden Girls with me? I'm going to flick your balls. Okay, guys, like no, no, no. Okay, well, well, you know, yeah, but yeah, but it's seriously, upper left scrotum, not cool, not cool, dude, not cool. Uh, one in the right jaw. One on the outside of his right hand. Oh my god, this guy, poor guy, got he took more shots than 50 cent. Anyway, one in the right ear. Oh Jesus Christ. It sounds like they were just kind of just like bam, 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 shooting you. Know, like and one in the front of the cheek. The last wound was fatal. So the, the shot to the balls, the thighs, the hand. That wasn't what killed this poor guy. It was a shot to the cheek. That was... that was. Uh, the last wound was fatal. According to the autopsy report, two guns were found. A thirty-two revolver was lying on the floor and a twenty-five caliber pistol was on the top of the TV. See, this is why I say that it was overkill. This is why I'd say it was kind of premeditated. They, they didn't just shoot to, like, to, uh... Like, to, to like, prevent... Uh, Charlie Sigwin from, you know, his drunken rampage. They, they, bam, 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 bam. Oh, gun's empty. Bam, bam, bam. Here's another gun. You know, like, no, th this seems like overkill. This seems like it was premeditated. At least that it's premeditated to me. That's the way I'm reading it. To all of you guys out there, if you're watching this, what do you guys think? In the comment section below, do you think that this was premeditated or, uh, like how Char the, the, uh, Charlie, Charlie Sigmund's, the camp, you know, his camp is claiming, or do you think that this was self-defense, like how Gary Goff, uh, claims? Okay, both had been fired. Additionally, a bloody iron 
had been placed in a waste basket in the kitchen. What? Oh, both games are done. Okay, let's get the iron now. Let's start bludgeoning this poor guy. Holy shit. Holy fucking shit. Uh, Gary was arrested that night. He and Ann were interrogated at length. He said he struggled with Charlie hitting him with the iron and firing all seven of the shots. Ann co corroborated his testimony, but did admit to handling the 25 caliber pistol. He claimed that Charlie had uh, arrived at the house at around 3 a.m. in a drunken rage, demanding to be let inside. He then forced his way inside. She maintained that once inside, he began beating her severely until Gary came to her rescue. Though he had a broken arm from an earlier incident, he fought with Charlie and then uh, shot him five times. He fired two more shots from the twenty-five caliber pistol. Finally, Charlie collapsed. Well, yeah, because you turned the, the you turned the got poor guy into a a blood spigot. In other words. Holy shit. Okay, let's try this. Let's try this. Okay, please, please read, please. I'm, I'm begging you, please. Please, come on. Please. Elapsed. Okay. Unfortunately, no blood test was taken to prove if Charlie had been drinking. His friend claimed he was not, and others confirmed he was not normally a heavy drinker. But even if Anne's story was true, there still might be grounds for a charge of premeditated murder if she and Gary had both fired at Charlie. Police conducted a powder residue test to see if she had fired a gun. It was in. Uh, it was inconclusive, uh, according to according to what it was. Okay. Uh, Patrol Hilburn took all the evidence to the prosecutor's office. The prosecutor asked him how he felt about this case, and he said that he felt... That it was probably self-defense. What? What? Self-defense. They, they shot the poor guy seven times. Okay, I can understand self-defense like one shot, two shots, maybe three. Enough to fucking subdue the person without killing him. But seven motherfucking shots. That guy had more metal in him. Let's see, what, what's a good, what's a good, uh, an, uh, example, analogy, uh. That guy had more metal in him than I have fillings in my teeth. I, I think the fillings are, are metal. I'm not sure. I'm, I, I, don't, I don't fucking know. They, they put fillings in my teeth. I didn't ask, hey, I'm going to be doing a podcast in about 10 years. Are these metal? Because I want to use... I didn't fucking ask them. Why do you look, stop looking at me like that? Anyway. Anyway. Uh, so, uh, but it was inconclusive. Uh, it's a good job. Uh, he said, uh, let's see here, he said that uh, they had to do more investigation to see for uh, sure. The Carothersville Police Department released Ian and Gary. However, the investigation continued. Chief Deputy Jack Davis felt that they were running out of options for finding evidence so that they could charge someone in the case. They knew they had to do something, something different, sorry. Uh, one of Anne's friends claimed that she had told her that uh, she had reasons for wanting Charlie dead. One of them possibly being insurance money. Oh, money. They've always said that, like, when it comes to murder and everything, it, it always boils down to, like, sex, drugs, and money and stuff like that. Uh, so, yeah, insurance money, that's good uh, motivation. Uh, the sheriff's department wired the friend for sound and waited for Anne to say something. Uh, that would be an admission of guilt. During the recorded conversation, the friend told her that she was planning to go to the police. Anne told her not to go to the police, give her uh, give her time for herself and Gary to leave town. Chief Davis felt she incriminated herself in the conversation. See, the way I originally thought, now that we're learning more about this, my original thought was possibly, uh, because I can't recall they actually mentioned the uh, insurance money in the video itself. Uh, my initial thought was maybe she killed uh, Charlie because of the fact that Charlie could have, you know, uh, exposed her secret about her being a witch and worshipping Satan. 
you know, the, like you know, states like Arkansas and Texas, they're very, uh, they're they're very religious. They're very religious. So, uh, you know, if you th if you threaten somebody to expose them for being a Satanist or a witch in some of these, you know, very religious heavy states, m you know, there's a chance that something could happen. You know, like, and maybe that's what Anne was afraid of. Like, oh God, people are going to find out I'm a witch and they're going to try killing me or something. That that was my reason that you know my thought for why she uh, killed Charlie. But that's just me though. That's just me. Okay, let's see here. Uh, let, let's see if this will work. Come on, please, please, I'm begging you. Conversation. After this recorded conversation and other evidence surfaced, the authorities began to prepare a warrant for and and Gary's arrest on the charge of first degree murder. They believed that the shooting had been planned in advance and that Charlie was lured to the house. But only a few hours later and vanished, leaving her two children behind. Gary had already left town and his truck was later found abandoned in Phoenix, Arizona. He and and have not be. Have not been been seen since. Now I'm kind of shocked that she would have left her kids. She took her kids with her uh when uh charlie charlie or yeah when charlie kicked her out she took the kids you would think that if she loved her kids that much to take them with her uh when you know when she was kicked out of the house you would think that she would want to keep her kids with her when uh she went on the run basically what if now it's just me. I'm I'm just I'm just I'm just shooting the shit right now, ladies and gentlemen. What if Gary actually uh what if Gary actually killed her? And that's why the kids were still, you know, in that area, you know. Hmm. They're not Gary's kids. Gary could fucking care less. It doesn't even really mention that what Gary's opinion of the kids were, whereas Charlie loved those kids. It doesn't really say anything about Gary Goff and the kids. So, you know, he didn't... They're not my fuck kids, you know, like... I'm just saying. I'm just saying, you know. Well, what are you saying, Jeff? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe he fucking killed her, you know? She's she's a witch. He could, he could probably say she's a witch. She flew off or something, you know? And by the way, before anybody says anything, I, I, there, there's a friend of mine who, uh, you know, I wouldn't say she's like a witch witch, but she, she does, you know, post funny witch memes and stuff, you know. Okay, well, anyway, uh, let's see here. Uh, where did the fuck did I leave off? Oh, where, okay. Uh, let's see here. I'll, I'll start. I'll read this part. In April 1987, charges were officially filed against Ann and Gary, and warrants were issued for their arrest. However, the police are still divided on whether the shooting of Charlie was self-defense or murder. Patrol Patrolman Helburn does not believe that it was murder. What? Dude, it was turned into fucking cheese. He was turned into fucking cheese. The guy's not in the union anymore, ladies and gentlemen. He's not even living. How... how Mm. Mm. One to two, or maybe three shots, like I said, could be seen as self-defense. Self-defense, you're basically trying to subdue a person to prevent any further act of aggression. Seven shots. Seven shots, ladies and gentlemen. To me, that screams a little bit like murder, if you ask me. That's just me, though. I should actually put up a poll one of these days. Seven shots. Does that equal murder or self-defense? I'd love to see what people actually say, you know. Hey, actually, actually, I think I'll do that right now. Here, let's do that right now. YouTube.com. You, you get to actually see me as I'm putting this uh, poll up. Hold on. Uh, view channel. Okay, by the way, I do want to say thank you to the people who have voted so far. Uh, so far, 10 people have voted 
on this upcoming, the next installment of Black Sight Files from Unsolved Mysteries, you get a vote to see, uh, to pick the uh, upcoming thumbnail. So, uh, you know, I want to say thank you to the people who have voted. Uh, Ten votes is actually more than I thought. I was only get like two or three votes at the most, but yeah. So, you know, I just want to say thank you. But anyway, anyway, uh, let's see. Uh, see here, seven. Uh, let's see, uh, Carly Sigmund was shot seven times. Was was it murder? Wait, hold on. Ah, fuck. Hold on. Let me do this. The text poll. There we go. Was it murder? Or self, yeah, yeah. or self defense. Okay, there you go. Now, if you're watching this, think of this like a weird form of interaction, ladies and gentlemen. You can actually get to vote on this. Was it murder or was it self defense? Yeah, I'm like, okay. So let's. Re I just want to refresh it because sometimes it acts up. Okay, so it looks like it's actually going through. You know. So, but anyway, okay, let, let, let's go back to here. Let's go back to here. Uh, he does not believe there was murder. He bases that on the crime scene, the disarray of the house, the damage that uh, well, that was done to it. What's there to say that the witch didn't just, like, use the force and start making everything just move around, like, all oh, willy-nilly, you know? Like, what's there to say that he, she didn't do that, you know? Uh, let's see here. Uh, let's see here. This way of the house, the damage that was done to it, the angle of the bullet wounds. And Char Charlie was shot everywhere from the head to the fucking balls. He was shot everywhere. Okay, poor guy. Not the balls. Holy shit. Anyway. Uh, the fight that occurred, the damage to Gary, including bruises to his chest, face, and back. Uh, Chief Davis, however, said that in his opinion, there are no probability, uh, there's no probability of self-defense. He believes that once this case goes to trial and all the information comes out, everyone else will realize it's not self-defense. Yeah, I I'm sorry, dude, but yeah, it's not self-defense, dude. This is... Even, 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 uh, fucking Ray Charles. Is it Ray, Ray Charles the blind piano guy? He can fucking see that this is fucking murder. <laughs> yeah, man. That, that guy was fucking murdered. <laughs> yeah, it's murdered. It's fucking murdered, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, Patrol Hilburn says uh, that he thinks Ann and Gary's biggest mistake was fleeing. The fuck you say? Really? Really? People who killed somebody fled? Oh, what the fuck? Fuck you! They're the killers, the criminals. Of course, they're gonna flee. Criminals are a very stupid, repetitive bunch. They don't want to face justice. That's why they fucking run. He wants to see them come back to, and resolve everything. He does not believe that Gary is capable of murder in the first. Dude, I, how many shots does it take Lily for this guy to think that it could have been murder? Seriously. No, if seven shots is considered self-defense, like, is, is there, like, technically a... Okay, 99 shots is self-defense, but that 100th shot... Okay, that's murder. That's murder. <laughs> okay. Uh, however, he is not sure whether or not Anne is capable of... Oh my god, she's using her witchy witchy power. Everybody's in like in a fucking fog over there or some shit. You know, like holy shit. Uh let's see here. The only way this case can be resolved is when Anne and Gary have their day in court. They have never been officially served with a warrant but they fucking ran. Uh and they may not even be aware that they are wanted. Yeah, we killed we killed somebody. What? We're, we're gonna go to Tahiti. We're gonna go. To, we're gonna go have a nice vacation. Okay. Extra notes. This case first aired on the November thirtieth, nineteen eighty-eight episode. It was updated on the January seventeenth, nineteen ninety episode. 
Fearing publicity, Gary's friend who was with him the night of his murder remained anonymous, being interviewed in silhouette. Well, considering that we're dealing with a fucking witch. You know, this is one of the few times I'll be like, okay, maybe some anonymity may be best, you know, because I would, I would uh, if I was the producer of Unsolved Mysteries, I would really hate to think that, you know, the friend, let, let's say her name is Jasmine. Let, let's say that Jasmine, the, the witness, you know, I'd hate to say, you know, use her real name and then call Jasmine for a follow up. Only to find out that poor Jasmine had her body fucking turned inside out, you know? Yeah, maybe some anonymity this one time may uh, be for the best when we're dealing with a fucking witch. <laughs> oh, God. Anyway. It was submitted to the show by members of law enforcement. That's the way a lot of these cases are, yeah. But anyway. Unlike most wanted segments, there was... Doubt over what or not, whether or not uh, Anne and Gary were guilty. They're fucking guilty. They shot him seven fucking times. <laughs> seven times. That once or two or three times. Seven. Seven. They could. They shot him for one day of each of the fucking week. <laughs> this witch is fucking powerful. I tell you. Anyway. Let's see here. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's see here. Uh, evidence was presented supporting both self-defense and murder. The show incorrectly states that Charlie's death occurred on October 20th, 1986. Producers for the show noted that the information regarding the voodoo doll and other witchcraft-related activities was secondhand. That's what I've been. I always say it's secondhand. I don't. I prefer first-hand knowledge. Anyway. Uh, let's see here, secondhand, and they cannot say for certain whether Anna was actually involved with wit in witchcraft. Authorities refused to confirm or deny if witchcraft was involved in the case. Anne's relatives have alleged that Charlie physically abused her. These allegations have not been confirmed. Okay, I'm going to take a quick break. I gotta get something to drink. My bottle's almost empty, and my throat's getting a little bit dry, so I will be right back. Okay, so we are back. So I'm going to try and see if the program will actually read it this time. So let, let's uh, let's go down to here. Please, please work. I'm, I'm begging you. Please work. Unresolved. Okay, here On we go. May twenty second, nineteen eighty nine. Gary voluntarily surrendered to Pemiscot County Sheriffs in Carruthersville on the charge of first-degree murder. A week earlier, he had contacted Chief Davis through a third party and said he was tired of running. They negotiated a peaceful surrender. Okay, he, so basically, he was, I don't blame them. Running, you know, spending your life on the run is not something easy. Especially if you're not rich, you gotta fucking try to find money. Yeah, so, you know, it only makes sense that this guy would turn himself in after a while. That, or the witch made him do it. I don't fucking know. He still maintained that Charlie's death was self-defense. However, he shed some light on other things that occurred in relation to this case. Specifically, he said that and had fired some of the shots, including the fatal one. Gary told authorities that during the last two years, he and Anne used assumed names and traveled through several parts of the western United States, including Arizona, New Mexico, and California. While in Arizona, they stayed on an Indian reservation where, according to Gary, and practiced satanic rituals. Okay, now, since, since he's actually coming out and saying that she's a fucking witch, I better, I maybe I should start uh, watching what I'm saying because I'm, a, I'm afraid my body's gonna get like turned inside out and then I'm gonna be turned into a pretzel or some shit. You know, like, you don't wanna fuck with those witches, dude. They'll, they'll fuck you up. Okay. Come on. and Sigmin on unsolved.com. Jesus Christ, really? Holy shit. Okay, hold on. Uh, let's see. It's... 
They ended their relationship and went their separate ways in April of 89, shortly before he surrendered. I'll make you a bet that she did some weird, funky mojo to the guy. She's like, on this day in 1989, you're going to turn yourself in. Why not? You know, like... Okay, uh, let's see here. On the updated broadcast, Gary made a personal appeal to Anne, asking for her to turn herself in and get this straightened out. He wanted her to come back to tell the truth of what happened. He said he needed help because he did not know everything that went on that night. He was in the fucking place. How does he not know? Uh, he believed he could only get help if Anne was found. However, she never turned herself in. Uh, she helped kill somebody. Criminals don't like to turn themselves in. This guy just happened to be, you know, smart, you know. A, a smart criminal is pretty rare nowadays. In June 1989, as a result of a viewer's tip, a woman believed to be Anne was arrested in Saline County, Arkansas. Now, that name sounds familiar. Saline County, Arkansas. Hmm. Uh, there were several similarities between them. However, after Chief Davis met with her, he quickly realized she was not Anne. She was then released. In January 1991, Gary entered an Alford plea for second-degree murder. He was sentenced to 20 years in prison and paroled in 2002 after serving 13 years. There's still an outstanding warrant, or outstanding first-degree murder warrant for Anne. Authorities believe that she may be living e in either Europe, Oregon, or Phoenix. Phoenix, Arizona, sorry. Uh, she may be using the names Andy Hayes or Andy Partlow. Partlow sounds like a good witch name, if you ask me. Uh, when she was last seen, uh, she was 5'6 and weighed between 140 and 145, uh, or 140, 145 pounds. She had brown hair and brown eyes. She was born on October 15, 1955. She may be passing herself off as an American Indian. She is considered extremely dangerous and should not be approached. She may still be involved in Satanism. Her family believes, however, believes that she is now deceased, possibly at the hands of Gary while they were on the run. Sadly, on January 22, 1991, Bonita passed away at the age of 66. Okay. So we have, uh, we actually have Charlie Sigmund find a grave. So let's check that out, shall we? And I do want to say thank you to Jasmine for uh, joining us. We will see her on the next installment of Black Sight Files from Unsolved Mysteries. But anyway, so we are now at Find a Grave. We have Sergeant Charles Algeron, Charlie Sigmund. And he is a veteran. That's why it has a little V here. Uh, he was born January 7, 1947. Uh, let's see. In uh, Blythesville, Mississippi County, Arkansas, USA. Uh, he was, uh, day of death was October 19th, 1986. He was 38, uh, 39 years of age. Location was Crothersville, Pres or Pem Pemiscot County, Missouri, USA. Uh, he was buried at Elmwood uh, Cemetery in Blytheville, Mississippi County, Arkansas, USA. Uh, the inscription reads, Beloved Son and Father, Loving Father of Christy, Sergeant in the U.S. Air Force. He was in Vietnam. Uh, he, uh, the only parent that is listed is Ernest Ward Sigmund from 1915 to 1998. You know, I'm looking at this and she, uh, he would be, he would be 78 years old now, if my math is correct. It may be not be correct. I fucking suck at math, so. Okay, so let's look at the photos. Okay, so we have the photo from Unsolved Mysteries. I'm wondering if this child here is... It's, wait, it said Christy. Didn't it say... Hold on, let's go back here. Uh, Father Christy. 
So I'm wondering if this little girl here that you see in this picture, this could be Christy. Okay, here's his uh, final resting place. Here's a tombstone. Wait, there's only three? I thought it said there was five pictures. Didn't see there's five? No, three. Sorry, three. My bad, my bad. And that is it, ladies and gentlemen. That was the case of uh, Anne Sigmund and Gary Goff. Uh, it, it's a very twisted road. Uh, you know, you have two camps here, ladies and gentlemen. You have the camp of Charlie Sigmund, who is outright saying that this was murder. And I'll be honest, I'm also kind of in the camp of that this was murder. You have a guy who was shot not once or twice or three times, but seven times. Seven times. To me, I would I would understand it being self-defense if he was, you know, shot two or three times. And it was all like in a central area, like say all in the kneecap, for example, you know. But when you have a couple in the inner thigh, uh, a shot to the hand, a shot to the cheek, which was supposed to have been the kill kill shot there, you have a shot to the scrotum. It just makes me sound like feel like this was more just like a frenzy kill, you know. But like I said, you have two camps. You got, you know, Charlie uh, Sigmund's camp saying that this is murder. And then you have the, you know, and Sigmund and, well, Bailey, basically it's Gary Goff. Who was saying that this was uh let's go down that this was basically uh self-defense you know but yes yeah, so, but ultimately this isn't about me ladies and gentlemen what i believe ultimately this is about you what do you think do you think that uh charlie sigmund while underneath under the influence of alcohol do you think that he lashed out he broke into that house and he attacked N. Sigmund, and thus, that's why he was killed? Or do you think that this was a premeditated murder? You know, or, or that they claimed a self-defense, or do you, was it premeditated? You know what I'm trying to say, you know. But anyway, so I'm going to take a quick break, and when I return, it will be with my final thoughts, so stay tuned, and I'll be right back. The world beyond will continue. Boy, oh boy, do we have an interesting case here, ladies and gentlemen. We have the case of a person who was shot seven times. Uh, one, you know, one, you know, you have one side that basically claims self-defense, and you have the other side that says this was murder. I personally believe that this was murder just based on the fact that he was shot seven times. Uh, I personally don't do not believe that it takes seven shots to subdue somebody to the point where they're no longer a threat. You know. However, it's not ultimately up to me what, you know, what to, what you are to believe. You are the viewer here. You are to make your own uh, decision. Do you think this was suicide? Oh, not suicide. Do you think this was self-defense? Or do you think that this was a, a case of murder? And like I said, it's up to you. That's up to you. But what we do know is that one of the two people is still on the run. And that person needs to face justice. That pers person needs to face justice. If they were innocent and this was simply a case of self-defense, why did they run? That's why I want you to ask yourself, why did why would they run? They're innocent. But yeah, so, you know, we have a... And, and ultimately, the sad thing is, but sweeping aside the fact that a person was killed... Uh, and another person's on the run still. The sad thing is that both of these people, Gary, not Gary, uh, Charlie Sigmund and Anne, both have children. And ultimately, those children, uh, Christy, you know, Charlie's daughter, she lost her father that night. And Anne's two children, uh, you know, they, they may not know what ended up happening to their mom. So if anything... Along with the death of Charlie, we also have children who are impacted by this incident. But that's why I like to keep these, you know, I like to cover these cases and keep them active. That way, one of these days, it could be you. You know, you could be going to a grocery store and you could find somebody who is reading a magazine. 
and it could be the person that we're looking for. Who knows? Yeah. But anyway, that is it, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you have enjoyed this installment of Black Sight Files from Unsolved Mysteries. Next time, uh, for the next installment of Black Sight Files from Unsolved Mysteries, it will be the case of... It, the next... Uh, wait, hold on. Uh, there it goes. Okay. The next... Where the hell is it? Hold on. Hold on. Oh, here we go. The next... Uh, oh, God. The next case... Our next installment will be the case of Robert Matthews. Uh, this is also known as the missing time case. Basically, uh, this is a case that covers, I think it's like three cases of people who uh, just lost track of time, basically. It's believed that they could have been uh, abducted by aliens. And this is one of the cases that I, I really like because it's the production value. This had that real early Unsolved Mysteries uh Rolla style of recording and everything so i really love this case and i hope you love it too when we uh check it out on the wiki you know but anyway that is it ladies and gentlemen i hope you have enjoyed this video i just want to say thank you to everybody who watched it as always if you like what you watched feel free to click on that subscribe button click on that like and the bell and you will be alerted when i release uh the next installment so, until then, my name is Jeff, a.k.a. G. Chris, and I'm wishing you all a great weekend, and I'll, I'll see you all later. So, until then, peace out, everybody. Hello, Karen, this is Wally. Remember those times when everything depended on a phone call? Good evening, Karen. Wally's here. Chances are the phone you depended on was made by Western Electric. Karen, Wally. Today, Western Electric still makes every telephone the same way, with Western Electric reliability, just like always. Hello? Hi, Wally. Karen here. For 95 years, America's depended on Bell telephones made by Western Electric.